That training is usually led by a college level professor or someone who has been trained by college board. And then in turn, that teacher for the school has to come the audit process where they have to submit their syllabus and be approved by college board to teach the course. So there's a lot of things that go into who's able to teach the AP. In total, there are 38 AP courses in seven subject categories. RCPS offers a plethora of AP courses here in Rockdale County. Each AP course is modeled after an entry level college course. There is always an exam at the end. It is typically the first two weeks in May. And schools have to authorize that AP course audit and it's signed off on by the school, the principal and the district. This is um, a list of some of the courses that AP offers. Here in Rockdale County, we offer um, a number of these as well this year, we um, have submitted a request to be able to offer AP pre-calculus, which is a new course for AP. I've also um, submitted an application for our schools to offer AP African American studies this year. We should be finding out in the near future if our schools have been granted the pilot rights to those courses. So what are the benefits of taking an AP course? Well, the first thing is that it challenges your students academically. It is a college level course that they're taking in high school that has been approved by college board. So their rigor is there. The second thing, it helps their transcript. It sets them apart in the college admission process. Going back to the idea of the audit, when colleges look at the high school transcript, when they see English. Well, they might not know the curriculum for that English course, and they might not know the type of mapping and sequencing that that student had in that course. But if they say A, if they see AP, English Language Arts, Language and Composition, then they know that that's a rigorous course, that the teacher had to be trained, and they already know the college board mapping and sequencing habits of mind and skills that that student was required to do in order to complete that course. The third reason why it's beneficial for your student is because if they score three or higher, many colleges will accept that as college credit, and that's one less course they have to take when they're in college. There is a website that we um, encourage our students to look at. With that website, you can go on there, you can look at the college you're interested in, and you can look to see if they accept a three, four, or a five for college credit. And lastly, research shows that students who've taken an AP exam, even if they scored a one or a two, which means they probably didn't get college credit, but they are more likely to graduate college on time than their academically matched peers who did not take an AP course or exam. That experience and that exposure for taking the course and sitting for the exam are invaluable. So who's eligible? One of the things that I'm proud to say about Rockdale County Public Schools is that we're not a gatekeeper for advanced placement courses. Any student enrolled in 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th grade is eligible for AP courses in Rockdale County. There are some prerequisites for courses, such as AP Biology. You have to have regular biology first, but once you've taken and successfully completed biology, you can take AP Biology. And lastly, um, students that are interested in this can get that high school college credit. Um, your student is not alone when they're taking this AP course. Um, there are many resources that we offer. Teachers offer um, remediation sessions. They offer enrichment sessions. They offer um, testing workshops. For students to get them ready, but we also offer what's called AP Classroom. And the AP Classroom for your students will have the unit guides, it'll have resources, the personal project progress checks or quizzes that they can take throughout, and there's also some AP practice exams to get them ready for the May test.
we've already mentioned that teachers who um, are teaching the course have already gone through the credentialing process and they have been authorized to teach the course by College Board. So let's look at the exams. The AP exams are administered the first two weeks of May every year. The AP exam is on a scale of a one to a five. Once again, every college sets their own policy about AP credit and what score they will accept. Exams typically take anywhere from two to three hours. They include a multiple choice section, and they also have a free response section. That could be anywhere from essays to problem solving to a DBQ question. If they're taking art, there typically is some sort of portfolio. And if they're taking a world language, there is some sort of recorded oral response. This chart just shows you on this AP score of a one to a five, typically what that means as far as your credit recommendation and what the college equivalent is for that. AP exams um, are a cost to the student. However, here in our district, a free and reduced student will get one paid for by Rockdale County Public Schools, as well as one will be paid for by the state. There also is some incentives for students who are taking a STEM course. They also will get um, some of that fee waived by the state. So we do have a lot of options for students when it comes to paying for the exam that we assist them with here in Rockdale County. So a couple of myths and realities. Um, the myth is that AP courses are only for students who get good grades, and that's not true. It's for any student who's motivated and wants to take that academically challenging course. Are AP courses too stressful? Well, it's no secret. They are challenging, but there's tons of support and resources along the way to assist your student. Some people think I don't score high enough on the AP exam, so why should I bother? Remember, you don't have to score a five for all colleges. A three, four, or a five are beneficial for colleges to receive that course credit. Some people think that taking AP courses can hurt their GPA. Well, let's remember that our CPS AP courses are weighted on a 5.0 scale. So taking an AP course, you're challenging yourself, but it's not going to hurt you academically on your transcript. Some people say I can't take AP because no one has recommended me. But remember, that's not true because we're not a gatekeeper. We advocate for everyone to be able to take an AP course and challenge themselves. This is just a list of some of the possible course offerings that we have here. Remember, I've also put into College Board for us to offer AP Pre-Calculus and offer AP African American Studies this year. So what's the process? Well, you've done an awesome job tonight by starting that process because you're here to try and learn more about advanced placement. So you attended an advanced academics night. From here, you can research some colleges of your interest to determine what AP courses they accept. From there, you can meet with your advisement counselor, your high school counselor, and figure out, okay, what courses can I take? Because they will be starting scheduling soon, um, second semester. Um, talk with your parent or your guardian or talk with your student to figure out what their interests are. And then lastly, what you'll do is you're, you will register for your course at the school. Some things to think about. Coursework is going to be more challenging than your traditional high school course. Also, credit transfer is not a guarantee. Remember, do your research. Look at the colleges that you're interested in that you want to go to and see what score they accept. Also, in order to be considered for the college credit, you do have to sit and take the AP exam. This is just the website that I've included here where you can go on and look up your college that you're interested in attending to see what score they accept. And this is on the College Board website as well. If you want more information, I would encourage you to go to www.collegeboard.org or please feel free to reach out to your school or myself, Beth Gillis, and I'll be able to help you in any way I can.
So a couple things about AP and dual enrollment because you're about to hear from them. There are some similarities here. They do both um, help you get a GPA boost. Um, they both do um, give you college credit. They allow you to, kind of, to have a rigorous course while you're still in high school, and they both look great on your transcripts. A couple of things where they're different, though. The AP students do not get college credit automatically. You do have to sit for that AP exam. There is a cost associated with the college credit, but remember we do have um, different incentives and scholarships that we offer here in Rockdale County Public Schools. AP credits are recognized nationally because it is approved and authorized college board course through the audit process. Dual enrollment credits are not always recognized nationally. Um, also, please note that dual enrollment credits may not transfer to all of the colleges that you're interested in. And lastly, most dual enrollment courses are semester, while an AP course is going to be year long. That's my email address there. If I can be of any help to you, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Beth. If there's any questions, you can put them in the chat for Ms. Gillis. Again, because I have a separate one. <laughs> no, that's not the right one. Sorry, guys. Why is mine not on here? All right, hello again. I'm Alicia Walker and I'm a college and career specialist with Rockdale County Schools. Um, I am going to start my dual enrollment um, information night um, talking about general information for dual enrollment and then we'll move on to our post-secondary partners. Now my frozen. All right. So before we move forward, um, know this option is a collaboration with numerous college partners. So we have Point University with us, Clayton State University, as well as Georgia Piedmont Technical College. If you proceed with this option, you will be applying for a college, um, just as any conventional college students will apply. So you will do the application, you will submit your transcript, and then um, the college will um, give you, send you an email, let you know if you are um, have been accepted into the class, into the sorry, into the college. Um, please remember that as a college student, a large amount of time and dedication and self-responsibility is required. Um, so if you agree to move forward with the application process and the dual enrollment, that you have to be um, accountable and responsible for the, the things you have to do as a college student. So during the process, please be patient. Please ask questions and follow directions. Also, I've um, created a checklist. So students, can you see that, everyone? You can um, take a screenshot if you want to go to this um, web address or do um, go to the QR code and use the QR code and that will take you straight to the um, Rockdale County Public Schools dual enrollment checklist for you. And this is sure you look like here. As it loads, show you briefly. So when you go there, you'll see all our partner um, institutions. You will see um, the course directory where you can look and see what the classes you want to take. If it's something outside of RCA, if you want to take something different, if it's um, eligible to be taken um, and all the different things you need to complete um, for your dual enrollment and the process for it. All right, so what is dual enrollment? So the, so the purpose of dual enrollment um, is to promote and increase access to post-secondary educational opportunities for eligible Georgia high school students. In short, it is to gain college credit while you're in high school. And we'll I give more emphasis on what dual enrollment is in the next few slides. 
So what are the benefits of dual enrollment? So students can um, enroll in part-time or full-time basis. When I mean part-time, a lot of our students um, attend Rockdale Career Academy and they're already taking, they're taking high school classes along with their dual enrollment courses. Um, and there, there could be some students who are full-time um, dual enrollment students where they're only taking college level classes because they completed all the requirements they need for the high school um, classes as well. Um, great things about dual enrollment, it helps prepare students for the transi transition to college after they graduate. You can um, get a step up of what it means to be a college student, how to study as a college student, um, how to um, prioritize your time when you have other things um, that's vying for your attention. Um, it can provide a flexible schedule while you're in high school. It provides a more rigorous classroom environment for students, um, so you can be, again, prepare for college. Um, students can save money um, on their first 30 hours for college, so you can enter into college as um, either a sophomore or a junior, depending on how many classes you do take. And text textbooks are provided by the college, so you don't have to pay for those either. Is everyone still seeing my screen? It looks different now to me. I'm not sure what happened. Let me know. Yes. I'm not sure. Is everyone still seeing my screen? Hey, Alicia, I can still see your screen. All right, thank it's, you. <laughs> it's just not showing as a presentation, but I still see the screen. Gotcha. I'm not sure what happened and I can't change it. Something happened. <laughs> I think it's in a different mode. I do apologize for that. All right, so um, the number one benefit of dual enrollment, option A, um, you're going to see me have option A in my presentation. Um, there's option A in Georgia and option B diplomas. Um, GPTC will discuss what an option B is, um, and they'll go through uh, the process for option B students who take CTAE classes. Again, um, another benefit, I think, sorry guys. Some technical difficulties. All right, sorry guys. All right, another benefit for um, option A academic core classes that you um, are taking is that you get a step up. So a lot of times, as you can see here, students do change their major when they get to college and that can be costly and timely. Um, and more, a lot of students change their major at least once, a lot more change their um, major at least two times or three times. So with that, you can prevent yourself from having um, to pay more money out of pocket um, if you're going to take dual enrollment classes. So you, um, even if you change your major, you know you have 30 hours already um, that you've taken that won't be, affect your overall um, tuition bill. All right. So dual enrollment um, option A, academic core. That's the largest of our dual enrollment programs. Um, and your academic core is going to consist of your English classes, your social studies classes, your science, your um, math coursework, and also um, um, your foreign languages, or excuse me, modern languages. Option A students will complete the 24 um, Rockdale County Public Schools required cr um, credits. Um, so those students, so you can take college credit for your high school credit. So if you take an English class um, as a dual enrollment student, your English class would count as your college course as well as your high school course. And some, again, some graduation requirements may be completed through dual enrollment courses. And we have college classes here at the Rockdale Career Academy. I have some students who actually drive to Clayton State to take it, and we do have students who take online courses. Um, please feel free to take a screenshot of the graduation requirements. Um, some I put try to put in some of the dual enrollment classes that you may take depending on the year. Um, over here, you may see um, for the English courses, I'm going to talk about those for your 11th grade year. So we have so 11th grade year students take American Lit. Um, and it has an EOC. If students take the American Lit as a, um, sorry, as a um, dual enrollment class, you still have to take the EOC for the um, class for graduation. Um, many of our students will start taking dual enrollment English class in their 11th grade year. Um, with that, if you take English 1101 and English 1102, the first two classes you have to take as a freshman in college for dual enrollment, those two classes are um, prerequisites for the American Lit class. So we have a lot of 11th graders who will take um, um, English 1101 or 101 for point, um, 102 or 1102 um, their junior year, and then they'll take American Lit their senior year. Um, I want student, to caution students sometimes, um, just be aware that what you have to put in um, 
the effort and the time you have to put in to make sure you take the right sequence and you don't mess up um, taking the classes. If something doesn't go well your junior year because you're looking to take American Lit your 12th grade year. So who is eligible for dual enrollment? So previously, some years ago, we've had um, probably about three or four years ago, students could take um, dual enrollment from ninth grade on. That has um, since changed. So ninth graders are no longer eligible for dual enrollment funding. Um, so they, they can still take it if a college will accept them and they meet the requirements. However, the state will no longer fund um, their classes for dual enrollment. Next, 10th graders, they're eligible to, um, sorry, I'm talking in my, no, okay. Again, 10th graders are able to take um, dual enrollment classes. Um, they can take CTAE classes um, at any participating um, TCSG institution, which is a technical college um, institution in Georgia. We partner heavily with um, Georgia Piedmont Technical College for our CTAE classes. Um, so students can begin taking classes with them as a 10th grader um, that way. One caveat, 10th graders with um, a minimum score um, SAT of 1200 or a minimum ACT composite score of 26 in a single test um, national test administration, they may enroll in um, approved courses um, for academic classes other than CTAE classes. And when I mean one single national test administration, that means they went to um, take a test on a Saturday, they got the right score, and they can they can now take um, college coursework. Now, students when they apply to college after when it's time to graduate and go to college, um, some schools will take this um, super score. So a student may sit for a test twice and they can um, take the higher of the two, um, but that's not the case. Um, they can take the higher, like if you get higher on writing and then higher on math um, in two different tests, they'll take both of those scores and do um, a super score for that. That is not the case for dual enrollment. Um, and 11th and 12th graders are eligible for full funding for um, dual enrollment for academic classes or CTAE classes at any eligible USG or TCSG or private school. So dual enrollment grades and credits. So final grades and dual enrollment courses count for college and high school credit. So they will both appear on your high school transcript and the college transcript. Again, for those students who take dual enrollment classes and you are applying to a college your senior year, you will need to submit your college transcript to that college. So let's say you go to Clayton State University and you um, not go, but you um, want to apply, you will need to send your college transcript if you go um, to Point University for dual enrollment classes and you're applying to Clayton State, you have to submit a transcript request to send your transcript to the Clayton State. So most college courses count as a full high school credit um, course. So English 1101, again, you will have that for one semester. So students will start that in August. That class will end in December. And so that class will count as one credit. Students who take a regular high school course, they'll take um, the A section the first semester and they get 0.5 credit. And then they'll take the next section of that class in this spring and they get 0.5 for that. And that's how they equal to one credit for the whole high school course. Dual enrollment courses are weighted at an extra 5.5 um, points in your GPA calculation for HOPE GPA. And it also is, is weighted um, more for your um, GPA with Rockdale County Public Schools. Be aware that when you see your um, transcript, though, you will, if you so the college issues a letter grade to you. So if it's an A, it comes to us as a 95. We'll put that on your transcript. If it's a B, it's an 85. C, 77. A D is passing since we do not have Ds. Um, F will be a 60, so it's going to be a failing grade. A W is a Z, and a W F is a 60. So the W is a withdrawal. So students who are in um, dual enrollment classes. For any college, they have a certain amount of time when they can drop the course. Um, we don't want you to do that, but they do have a certain amount of time beginning. It's like you never were enrolled in the course. And you can drop it. We won't um, do the funding application for you for that, um, and it would not go on your transcript. But students who are in their classes and the drop period is over and they want to withdraw from the class, um, and we did not suggest you do that at all, but they do withdraw that um, student will have a W on their college transcript and they will have a Z on their high school transcript. And if a student um, withdraws during a period when withdrawal is over for the college, that student will automatically get a WF and that's a 60 and that is calculated into the overall GPA. So please be aware of that. The Z is not calculated into your GPA. Um, dual enrollment courses meet the academic rigor requirement for HOPE scholarship and you have to have four um, credits um, for that HOPE scholarship. 
So dual enrollment funding. State dual enrollment regulations allow funding for 30 semester hours for students or 45 quarter um, hours um, for attempted college credit. So most of our colleges that we partner with do have um, semester hours. So that's the August to um, December and the January to May. Um, we do partner with one school, um, Georgia Military College, that has um, quarter hours, which is a shortened period of time. So it's roughly um, like August to October and October to December. And so you see how um, it's very short and condensed um, time for classes. Also, a list of classes are approved each year by the Georgia Student Finance Commission, and they all include um, your academic core classes and your CTA classes. You can see what's approved. No funding for repeat courses, including withdrawals. So if you take a class um, in the fall semester and you don't do well and you want to retake it in the spring semester, you cannot um, use dual enrollment funding for that course. You're not allowed to do that. Um, also, for student withdrawals from two classes, um, they are not, um, they're no longer eligible for dual enrollment funding. You can um, submit an appeal if something went wrong during your, um, your period, the time when you were in dual enrollment classes, um, but you have to show um, some documentation saying that um, something happened or you got sick and you couldn't complete your dual enrollment classes and that's why you had to withdraw. Fine arts and physical education courses are no longer eligible for dual enrollment funding. Um, they were um, some years ago. And again, if you want to go, here's the website for the um, course directory to see what classes are approved. All right, I'm moving into Georgia Futures um, for the students, for the Georgia, um, sorry, for the count for students for dual enrollment funding application. I want to hit this because some students um, did complete it or complete it late. And I just want to show you what it looks like. So students will have to complete a Georgia Futures um, account, have an account to complete the dual enrollment funding application. So you can see here what all is um, needed for that application. Students must have their social security number on the application and it has to be correct. So please make sure that when students fill it out, you fill it out with your parent and y'all do it together. It's, it's much simpler if parent and student are together while they complete this. And the profile information will pre-populate into their dual enrollment application. So students will complete a dual enrollment funding application each year. So if you're 11th grade and you do one this year, you will do it again for your 12th grade um, for the next year. It opens up on February 1st, is not available right now. So for the next year, 23-24 year, you will um, create your funding application in February and it opens on the 1st. So please make sure you have your correct parent email address and students can view their dashboard for application status. And that's at georgiafutures.org. Um, also right here, you see where you can add colleges for the colleges you, um, you plan on taking dual enrollment with. Um, you can add up to 10, but most students are not attending 10 colleges. Um, so please only add the colleges where you plan on taking your classes. Um, we cannot at the high schools add colleges for you. And we can also not delete your funding applications. Um, if something goes wrong, um, students are able and parents are able to contact me and I can reach out to Georgia Futures and ask um, if there's an issue with your uh, funding application. And students are able to view the, um, their um, application status in their dashboard and see where they um, are and make sure things are processed correctly. Students will um, complete their part and the email will be sent to a parent um, to complete their parent acknowledgement part um, so they can um, approve the dual enrollment um, funding for that student. We cannot move forward until the parent has completed the parent acknowledgement part for the Georgia Student Finance Commission's um, dual enrollment funding application. All right, I'm gonna hit self pay for dual enrollment funding. Um, students can pay for their own um, classes they want to. So I do have some ninth graders who are taking dual enrollment classes um, and they can, because if they can um, get into the college, um, you can do that, but you have to self pay. So be paying out of pocket until they become 10th graders, they're CTAE students. Um, just be aware of what's available to you and that you can take classes if you want to, if you um, are um, going into ninth grade. All right, some considerations for dual enrollment. Courses are going to be taught at a college level and students must be prepared. So please go to class. Um, please make sure you submit your things on time and always communicate with your instructors. And instructors will only communicate with the students. There will not be any communication with parents. So parents, if your child takes a dual enrollment class, please, um, if you're concerned about their grades and what assignments need to be turned in, ask the student to um, pull up their um, 
information for the college, whether it is Blackboard or DTL, and see what assignments need to be turned in and what is due, and ask to see the syllabus so you know um, what's happening with your child's education. And that way you know what's going on um, in that class since you, the, the teacher does not communicate with parents. And so again, parents will not have access to the student grades unless the student shows you what's going on with their grades. Um, because the courses are, are worth a full credit, good grades are great GPA booster, but poor grades are harmful to your GPA. And also, credit transfer is not a guarantee. You must do your research. And there are a lot of um, articulation agreements like with technical colleges and a university system, but make sure you're taking classes that will transfer to the college of your choice. So if you plan on going to out of state in the future, make sure the classes you're going to take now will transfer to that college. Also, competitive colleges may not consider dual enrollment as rigorous as AP. Again, research is your must. I love dual enrollment. I am the dual, enroll dual enrollment specialist. However, um, over the summer, I was with Oxford College and we just straight up asked them, um, do they prefer dual enrollment or AP classes? And they told us they prefer AP classes. So be aware um, of your options um, and what you um, need to do for your future. So here are the typical dual enrollment classes at um, RCA. You have your English, again, like we talked about, public speaking, college algebra and statistics, economics, American government, U.S. history, biology and the sciences, and social science classes. Um, we offer American government because the USG institutions, that's University System of Georgia, requires American government and U.S. history as college students. So we can go ahead and knock it out, out go ahead and get it done. Um, while you're here, um, instead of waiting until you get to college to take the American government class. In our technical um, career technical programs, we have here um, RCA or we bus students to um, GPTC's campus. We have certified nursing assistant, welding, early childhood education, cosmetology, and we bus students to GPTC for cosmetology. EMT and 911 operator, they're not here now. We're hoping that we get those back again um, in the future, um, hopefully for next year. Um, we really want to start promoting those programs, but currently um, they, we don't have any students in those programs. Also, one more thing. Um, this is new for male students starting this summer. Um, the state of Georgia is requiring that if males are turning 18 while they're in dual enrollment, they have to register for self-selective um, service. So if students are male students are 18 or turning 18 while they're in dual enrollment classes, they have to um, complete the registration for selective service. And here is my information if you want to take a screenshot of this. And also, too, if you want to um, copy this down or um, go ahead and go to the um, QR code, um, let me know if you're interested in dual enrollment. If you have any questions, please include them in the chat. All right. And then. All right. Ms. Vonda, are okay. you ready? I am Ms. Walker. Um, I just wanted to say first that the chat, when I click on it, it's saying that it's it's closed, like it's not um open. Gotcha. For, okay, so okay. okay. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Vonda Carmichael. I am the Clayton State University uh, dual enrollment advisor for Rockdale County. And so I just wanted to talk with you all this evening um, about some key points related to Clayton State. First of all, um, I wanted you all to know that my office, although I'm with Clayton State, my office is located at the Rockdale Career Academy, where we have our dual enrollment courses. And so please feel free to screenshot or take a picture um, of this first page because it's got all of my contact information. And when our students are attending our dual enrollment classes at the academy, I make sure that I have office hours there on those days that the students will be there so that if they have questions for me, if they need, gui if they need guidance or support, that I am literally there on campus for all of their educational needs. Okay. Now, I want to just talk a little bit about 
if your student is interested in dual enrollment with Clayton State University, which Clayton State is a University of System, University System of Georgia institution. So if your student is interested in moving forward with our um, university, I want to just talk about what is required to kind of get this process going. First and foremost, uh, the student has to complete an application. And so this is actually a good um, page to screenshot or take a picture of because it's got information about the website to make the application um, for our program. Um, on that website, it's got general information about our dual enrollment uh, program. It answers general questions. It's actually got uh, um, tabs on there where if a student or a parent needs to reach out to me, um, they can just click on that tab and I will receive an email and I can follow up um, with you. Um, the application process, it's, it's very streamlined. It's all online. And when you start that application, it will take you to the georgiafutures.org website. Um, Ms. Walker talked in depth about the Georgia Futures website, um, why it's important, but in relation to dual enrollment, just keep in mind that Clayton State is offering the courses and on Georgia Futures, that is the way for your student to have those courses and materials related to that course paid for. Um, so um, it's, it kind of goes hand in hand in terms of making that application and then also completing the Georgia Futures um, information and creating an account so that all of the monies that will be needed for the dual enrollment journey will be covered. Um, and so once the application is completed um, and, and received by our admissions office um, and the Georgia Futures information is completed, we then require transcripts uh, from your high school um, for dual enrollment students. They must have at least a 3.0 GPA to be considered for um, admission. And uh, some students that make applications, they have already uh, been enrolled, let's say, in some dual enrollment classes at other institutions. And if that is the case, we are also going to need transcripts from those other uh, programs. Um, and then, next slide, Ms. Walker. OK, uh, testing. So testing uh, uh, test scores are required uh, to be considered for admission. And so I've I've put on this slide the minimum requirements for the various tests uh, that um, our university accepts. So for the SAT or the PSAT, um, it's a 480 requirement for reading and writing or of 440 in math. There is no longer a composite score. And for a composite score, I just mean that normally we look at the reading and writing along with the math, and there has to be a minimum score. But our guidelines recently changed where we don't have to look at both of those scores. We're either looking at does a student qualify under reading and writing, or do they qualify under the math score. Um, and if so, we can accept uh, those, those tests. And the same for the ACT or the pre-ACT, where it's 17 that's required for English or reading, or a 17 in the math portion. Again, no composite scores. We don't need to look at both to determine admission. If a student scores 17 in the English or reading, they can be accepted into our program. Or if they get a 17 in the math and they don't get that in the English or reading, we can still accept them into our program. Uh, the other test is what's called the Accuplacer. Um, institutions offer this test. Clayton State University offers this test. Um, the minimum requirements for um, admission is 237 in reading and four in the writing portion or a 260 in the math portion. Um, now, 
uh, previously and just recently, we needed to make minimum scores or the student needed to make minimum scores in both those areas. Um, but now that has changed where a student could actually receive a 237 in the reading and a four on the writing portion and be admitted into our program. Um, they do not have to meet the 260 requirement in the math. Also, a student could meet the math requirement, um, but not meet the reading requirement and still qualify for our program. Based upon their eligibility, meaning whatever score is going to qualify them for our dual enrollment program, that's gonna determine um, their course schedule, like what courses they can take uh, once they are accepted into our program and they begin dual enrollment. Okay, next slide. Okay. Um, these questions we like to pose to our potential students because what's important for students to remember and for parents to remember is that uh, we are uh, working with high school students. And although we are working with high school students, guess what? When they qualify for dual enrollment, they are a college student. And so there are expectations that go along with that. Um, and it's a lot of responsibility. So these are questions that we like for students to consider, to think about, as well as for their parent to consider. Um, and so the question is, as a student, are you self-motivated? Are you able to manage stress in a positive way? It's all about balance. And can you do that? Um, are you proactive with completing assignments, studying, and having good time management skills? All of these responsibilities fall on you um, as a dual enrollment student. You're not going to have a teacher and instructor that's going to be reaching out to you and saying, you know, you have an assignment due. It's like deadlines are given, um, assignments are giving and given, and it is the expectation uh, that you will comply and adhere to all of those expectations, those deadlines, um, studying for the necessary tests and things of that nature. Are you consistent with attending class? Um, are you able to communicate with your teachers independently of your parents? Um, this is, is important. And the reason why is because when you become a dual enrollment student, um, the professors, myself, we can't share certain things with your parent um, that's related to you how you're doing uh, in your class or your classes, what your grades are, if you could get extra credit, all those things are discussed only with you. Um, and so the question is, um, are you able to advocate for yourself, communicate for yourself, approach your instructor or your professor when you need to, to talk about uh, various things related to the class or classes that you're taking? Um, and then, um, of course, meeting those deadlines, uh, not procrastinating in relation to what is required. Um, and are you able to maintain good grades while being involved in other activities? A lot of our students are doing other things. Again, you're a high school student. And so you might have extracurricular activities. You might be on the football team. You might be a cheerleader. So it's all about balance. And so the question that you must ask yourself is, am I ready um, to, to be independent with this journey, um, to uh, basically move forward independently um, to, to, to be successful in the dual enrollment um, arena, okay? Um, and that's all I have in terms of um, what I wanted to share. Um, are there any questions for me? I see that the chat is lit up, <laughs> so that's good. All right, so we're going to move on to um, Ms. Sanders with GPTC. Thank you, Ms. Um, Carmichael. You're welcome. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. My name is Kim Sanders. I am the dual enrollment coordinator, one of the dual enrollment coordinators with Georgia Piedmont Technical College. I am over Rockdale and Newton counties. Um, so I don't I don't want to go over a lot of information that's already been said tonight. So I'm going to keep um, some of the things kind of brief and then focus mostly on 
what is different with um, Georgia Piedmont. So um, the, yeah, this is just about the dual enrollment program in general, which Ms. Walker has mostly went over about the different changes. Um, some of the benefits of the dual, you can go ahead into the next one, that's fine. Okay, so some of the benefits of the dual enrollment program is um, it'll help you to save money. Tuition mo and most fees and textbooks are free to students. Um, it's convenient. We offer classes online at the high schools or at um, either one of our two GPTC locations, either the Clarkston campus or the Newton County campus. And it helps you to save time because you can earn high school and college credits at the same time. So we get asked a lot, is this real college? And the answer is yes, it's very much real college. Any course taken during dual enrollment is a part of both your permanent high school and college record. Um, so it is something that you want to take very seriously because those grades do stay with you on your academic record. All right, so a little bit of information about um, dual enrollment with GPTC. So GPTC is an open access institution, which means that we are um, it's easy, easily to obtain admission into our college. Um, we have convenient locations, online learning. Uh, we offer pro 40 different programs of study with hundreds of different pathways. We have 28 different core classes that transfer to USG system schools. Um, we offer degree programs, diploma programs, and also the certificate programs. We have several different schools of study to choose from, a school of business information systems, education and media, health and professional services, industrial technologies, School of Public Safety and Security, and then we also have economic development and a regional, a regional transit and transportation. So earlier I spoke a little bit about our different program tracks. So here's some more information about that. Uh, we have the Technical Certificate of Credit, the TCC. It is, they're usually one to two semester long and they prepare students to be career ready. Um, so if a student knows what they want to do and they're ready to get into the workforce, a technical certificate of credit um, will sometimes be what they are needing. Diploma. A diploma is a little bit longer than a certificate of credit. Uh, it can take one to two years. It's not a, a degree, a two year degree. It is a diploma. Um, an example of one of our diploma programs will be cosmetology. It is almost a two year program and once a student um, graduates with a cosmetology diploma, then they will take they will be prepared to take the state board to become a licensed cosmetologist. And then we do have associates to degrees. Um, students may just need a two year degree to get into their career or they may want to take their two year degree and then transfer out to a four year college or university. So as Ms. Walker stated earlier, um, there are two different dual enrollment options. There is the option A. Can you go back? Yes, sorry. That's okay. Okay. There is the option A, which is our most, um, most students do the option A, which is just taking you know, general core classes um, or going for a certificate or a diploma, but then there's also the high school graduation option B. This is for students that are looking for a different, um, that need an alternative plan to graduate high school. The high school graduation option B offers qualified students a unique path to earn a high school diploma and while also earning either an associate's degree, a diploma, or two technical certificates. So in order, if a student is 
um, might not would graduate high school or don't have all the credits that they need to graduate high school, um, option B might be a good plan for them. Um, of course, you'd want to speak with your high school counselor. Um, but a student would come. There's nine high school courses that the student would have to complete for their high school part of their high school diploma. And then they can either choose to complete an associate's degree, a technical diploma or two different certificates in one um, field with us. And so once they complete those nine high school courses and then one of the options with us, then they would be able to earn their um, high school diploma. I know it seems like a lot and it's kind of confusing. Um, so if you have any more questions, please feel free um, to reach out to, to us at GPTC. And I'll have my contact information at the end or either um, always talk to your high school counselor about it. Okay, so how do you apply? Um, our application is online. You would complete the online application. There's a new student packet that we would need. It just requires signatures from the parent and the um, students. And then we would need your high school transcript, possibly test scores. Test score testing is not mandatory. Um, we will determine whether you need testing based on your high school GPA. Um, the very next important thing uh, besides just applying would be to complete the Georgia Futures account. Um, without the Georgia Futures account, your dual enrollment classes cannot be funded. Um, you will want to speak with your high school counselor, um, select classes that you need, and get your high school counselor to add those classes to your Georgia Futures. And then, um, once, once you get accepted, then we'll begin the registration process. And this is class registration. Um, like I said before, students need to complete the Georgia funding application and have it approved, have their courses approved by their high school counselor. Uh, we do not allow the dual, our dual enrollment students to self-register, um, either me or um, my, the other coordinator, Ms. Toady, will do the registration for you. You would email us which courses you wanted to take, and then we would register you, of course, after you've already spoken to your high school counselor and got those approved. Just a few more things, um, and this is very important. All students are requesting accommodations must self-disclose and submit documentation. If you are receiving, if you have um, some sort of special accommodations in high school, they do not automatically transfer over to, um, to the college. We do not know that you have those, that you need that accommodation. That's something that you will have to self-disclose on your own. Um, and then I have the contact information for those. Um, Paula is Paula Greenwood, our disability service specialist, will be able to help you throughout that process. But like I said, it's very important that this is something that you would have to let us know if you need. And then the campus amenities. All of our dual enrollment, dual enrollment students are just as much a GPT student as our traditional students. And so you are, are available to use our library, bookstore, our academic success center, which includes tutoring, um, and any student activity that we have. Dual enrollment students are more than welcome to, um, to join. So this was um, touched on a little bit already as well. Um, it's talking about what we can tell parents. We, we cannot discuss grades with parents. Um, teacher, the professors and instructors will not speak with parents regarding the student. It's very important that students speak for themselves and learn to um, ask questions. It's a, it's a good time for the student to learn because once they get into college, 
as a traditional college student, they're going to have to do that anyway. So this is good practice for parents to be able to still be there and walk them through the process of how to speak with professionals. Um, now, we can speak to parents if the student allows us to, and they would have to fill out a FERPA waiver, but it's still very limited on information that we can give. So parents, please remember that if you call, we could only give you so much information, even if your um, student has agreed for us to be able to speak with you. And then um, if you do decide to do dual enrollment, uh, these are a few tips for success. Um, just get in the mindset that these are college classes, know what you're taking, become familiar with not only what your um, what your high school requirements are, but if it's a program of study at the college that you're really wanting to pursue, become familiar with that as well. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't overdo it and overload your schedule. Um, learn some new study skills and stay tuned in and check your email regularly. And then this is our dual enrollment email. That is the best way to get in touch with us. Um, please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, thank you, Mrs. Sanders. Um, now we You're have welcome. Point University's um, video. Ms. Terry Carroll is um, on, um, on with us right now. So if you have any questions for Point, um, just um, ask us in the chat box. Thank you. And I'm going ahead and play it. Sorry, guys. So you can't, okay, can't hear the video. Uh oh. Let's see. Sorry. Turn this down now. Can y'all hear it now? Sorry, starting. Uh, uh it's still no sound. Still no sound? Oh gosh. Okay. Mm -mm. Um, you probably did this, but when you hit share, did you say include computer? Oh, gotcha. Let me see. There we go. <laughs> It's right. It happens all the time to me, too. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Diversity that people do not know. That is over. One of the great, great things, things about, about Point, Point University, University that people do not know is that we were founded in 1937. So Point University is a staple in the Atlanta metropolitan area, starting at Atlanta Christian College. Our main campus is in West Point, Georgia, and we moved there in 2012. We're known now as Point University. So the great thing about Point is that we have three campuses. Our main campus is in West Point. We also have a site in Savannah, as well as in Peachtree City. I think a dual enrollment credit classes for uh, high school students is a wonderful thing. I think it gives them an opportunity to broaden their horizons. Also the college environment, the college structure, the curriculum that's also being taught to traditional college students. It helps prepare them for college and know what to expect. They don't go into a college setting completely unprepared. Point University makes it easy. We are in partner schools. And so that allows us to go to a school, we'll send a teacher, an instructor, and we have the opportunity to teach those students in their school, as well as for students to come to our site, either in Savannah or at Peachtree City. And so we have area public schools or homeschool students that will come and take classes here. When I was in high school, I really did not want to take any AP classes. Um, I just didn't see the benefit of them. So I really looked into dual enrollment and my high school paired with Point 
um, and I thought it was a great opportunity and I'm very glad that I did. I wanted to take a dual enrollment classes because I wasn't going to have that rigorous of a senior year if I just took the classes at my high school. Um, I enrolled in dual enrollment courses because I wanted to get ahead on my college credits and also it helps you get ahead even in high school because the classes only take one semester to get a full credit instead of a whole entire year. Well, it was my mom's idea actually, but I thought it was a really good idea to kind of get some college classes out of the way and it's also a good preparation for learning what college classes will be like. Our students have the opportunity to take those courses fully online and it makes it very flexible. Some of them hold down a full-time job and earn money while taking classes or other things that they're interested in. Just seeing them be successful um, in whatever they're wanting to do. Um, so I just love getting to know them and see them be successful. Also at Point University, our dual enrollment program is accessible. So all we need is a student who has a 3.0 GPA. We do not require SAT or AT ACT scores. Benefits of taking dual enrollment courses, especially with Point University, help to prepare the student for uh, their collegiate career. And so we want to make sure that our students are challenged. Yeah, it definitely gave me a taste of what college would be like. Um, so I think it really prepared me for coming into point and realizing that a lot of professors teach very differently and it gave me the ability to adapt. I would definitely go with Point University's DCE program because they work with students, they work with families. I think that it's a rewarding experience to have, you know, children in a DCE program broadening their horizons with the faculty and staff that are very concerned about the students, that they are very concerned about their welfare and want to see them do well, but also push them to apply themselves. If I were talking with families that were um, deciding between different colleges for dual credit programs, there are several benefits. Point offers usually smaller classes, um, very personable instructors who um, are happy to help you anytime. You can reach out to them. Um, and I just think that they would enjoy the environment. If a student is interested in dual enrollment at Point University, I would suggest that that student go right to our website at point.edu slash DCE, as well as contact your school counselor. Alright guys. Well, that is it for our presentations for dual enrollment and advanced placement classes. Um, I'm going to stop presenting now. If they have, if you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat or raise your hand, and I will be able to call on you that way. Um, just let me know. Ms. Walker. Uh huh. Um, a guest um, put a question for um, point in the um, chat. Okay. The question is, what if you take dual enrollment with Point University and then after graduating high school, you decide you want to go to UGA? What happens? Um, well, nothing should happen. You will have to submit your Point transcript to UGA. Um, so when you apply to UGA, you will submit your high school transcript as well as your Point University transcript to the school um, for admissions. Any other questions? Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, I thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, you have our contact information. So if you need to reach out to us, please do so. Um, school counselors will start advising soon. Um, so if you can go do some research at Point University, at GPTC, or at Clayton State to see the classes, to um, get a feel for um, what you will, um, everything entails for going to college, um, go ahead and research um, and see, um, do your best to know to prepare yourself for the next steps for um, taking dual enrollment classes, um, also for advanced placement classes. <laughs> um, if you have any, don't have any questions now, I'm going to end um, the recording. And I'm going to close it out, but please um, contact us if you have any um, questions. Thank you.